What's up guys, Shuri here, and today I'm going to go over a payload game with each of the ults for Aletta, and then a control game with each of the ults for Aletta as well. I'm going to show you the pros and cons of both, and I'll let you know which ones I prefer and why. And as you can see, we do have the second ult equipped. I love this one, especially for payload, because it is an amazing way to run around like a moron, aka my playstyle, and live. Because when people start to shoot you, you can get in close, use all of your ammo, and then pop the ult. It'll reload instantly, heal you to full, and then get in a good amount of damage without letting you run out of ammo. That is absolutely insane in so many different ways, especially if it's everyone being solo players. The other team isn't as likely to be playing as a team, and you can isolate people into these 1v1s. Right here, we go ahead and drop out of the fight knowing we'll heal, and if we kept pushing, we would have died to his turret. So we let that heal work and do its magic. That is one thing you do have to do. You have to be okay with doing a little bit of damage and then getting out of there. Right here, we had two guys kind of behind us and to our right. So we power through using our ult, which also gives a speed boost in getting out of there. Right here, we do fake that we're going to go up top and go back on our side and go around. And instead, we come straight back at him. We wait just a little bit for our team to get here. And then we're going to push in, do as much damage as we possibly can. And right here, we're going to pop our ult to get this kill and then go for that turret. We make the Sindri get rid of his turret. And then we're going to back down, just wait for our team. We did hit the middle block, but we realized our teammates aren't on the cart. So he doesn't actually do anything. So instead, of doing that we just go straight up and try to kill these guys so their Sindri had some damage and dropped on the bottom we are going to consciously think about him being there so we don't just get snuck up on him but luckily he did take long enough that we were able to kill both his teammates he does hit his ult but we are able to run away which is important and one thing with Aletta if you ever see a Sindri turret just wall peek it it can't hurt you and you're good to go Right here, we take a ton of damage, so we pop our ult, and we're able to do some pretty good damage at range. Remember, with Aletta, you can do so much damage just doing a little bit at a time. And that's how you can get your kills while staying alive, with this ultimate especially. With the other one, you can kind of do more burst damage. This one is definitely more of playing like a mosquito, doing a little bit of damage here and there, being annoying and flying around, and making sure that you are staying alive. But most importantly, you are being the target of the other team's damage, and you are basically just wasting all their damage, and you're able to heal yourself over and over making it to where your team isn't having to take that damage and they can go in there get their kills and stay alive but most importantly you're staying alive and just tanking all that damage it's basically you're almost playing like a healer to yourself with this ult and right here what we're doing is we're double jumping and shooting the block in the middle to give ourselves double speed and then when we see a bunch of people down this little aisle what we're doing is we are just waiting behind the cart waiting for our ult to eventually come up and as soon as it does we are able to go ahead and get the win and as you can see here 12 kills with no deaths but here's what's important we have 64,000 damage taken that's why on payload i do prefer to have the second ult but the first ult isn't bad either, and it's good at different things. Right here, we're paying attention to the Osus up top, and then we're waiting for the guys on the left to get close enough that we can dash in and hit them with our bomb. That's what's so cool about this ult. You can run in, hit them with the bomb, it reloads, and while you're invisible, you can heal. Right here, my buttons screw up, so I'm trying to go forward and it just reversed itself that was kind of annoying but either way it's all good and right here what we're doing is just trying to put out what damage we can and we do push in and try to throw the bomb at the guy and instead of healing to full and just getting out of there when the guy got the heal we went for the kill it was a really bad idea but that's the main downside to this uh ult is the fact that it is a lot easier to screw up and die the other one is a lot more forgiving this one is actually 
better technically, uh, and especially if you have good teammates, but the other one is forgiving and lets you just make those mistakes. So if you are a very good Aletta, you may like the first ult more, but I'm terrible at Aletta, so I love the second ult. And if you're terrible at Aletta too, you might want to go to that second ult. Right here, we do pop our ult, and we're going to stay invisible to keep on healing and just not die. Because remember, when you're invisible, they're not going to be able to hit you. You move way too fast. So just get out of there and reset if you're low. That's the most important thing with this ult, is just knowing that you're going to do a little bit of damage and try to drop that bomb into them. But you also got to realize, if you don't get the kill there, you can always run away, regroup, and then come back in later your ult comes up very quickly so you don't have to do it all at once right here we do get the shell to no health and we are just pushing the cart we see the guy up top and we got to be really careful here especially because we're gonna get pushed by that christina so what we do is we get out up here and we're gonna just do what we can to do some damage from far away and then run in there hit our ult onto him and then heal back up Get that little bit of extra damage out, and now we're just trying to stay back from this shell long enough for our ultimate to come back. Because that's the biggest thing. If you're low, you need your ult to get up, so you're going to wait for it to come up, and then we do throw it into him. And now we're going to just do the long trek this way. That way we don't end up getting sniped, and instead we're going to come behind them. They push onto our cart. Luckily, we're able to kill him, throw our bomb into the Osis, and get the kill, and then push back the shell to get the win. And in this one, you're going to be a lot less likely to tank damage, and it needs to be a lot more skillful in the way you do it. It's a lot harder. So I definitely suggest playing with that first ult if you're newer to Aletta or just not very good with it. But once you do get good with Aletta, you might want to try incorporating it in more because it can be a very good choice. And the first ult can be a very good choice in control, but we are going to go back to the second ult first. So what we're going to be doing here is just trying to stay alive and stay Stay away from the fade. The fade being up close to us is very bad. If he's far enough away that we can dash out, that's where we want to be. Right here, we do get ourselves super low, and then we pop our ultimate. That's the main thing with the second ult, is you want to let them do some damage first. You don't want to pop it too early before they start hitting you, and you also want to have as little ammo in your gun as possible. The reason for this is you automatically reload when you hit the ult, so if you use all of your bullets that are at 100% damage, then you can pop your ult and do 50% damage bullets with an automatic reload. You should be able to get the kills very easily at that point. And right here, we are just trying to dance around Fade, help our teammate out because it's a rough position to be a wallying up to the Fade in this spot. So we try to help him out and we did get lucky enough not to die there. But right here, we pop our ult and realize it's going pretty poorly. Um, I should have backed out quicker, but I just really wanted to get this kill. It ended up getting me dead instead. Sadly, the mark ended up getting the heal instead of me. So I just go back out there and do what damage I could for my teammates. So the Fade tries to get in behind us, and we are going to rotate around and try to get some damage on him. And after killing Fade, we get in some trouble here, and this is what the voice in my head was like. Ah! But luckily, we do dodge around the boulder like a pro, and we are going to go with our teammate and just try to drop down, get some health back from the fade fight. And after helping our teammate take out the iris, we're going to frantically search for this uh, mark so I don't die because he's scary. But luckily, we do take it, and we noticed the guy was coming around the side, so we double jump and dash into the window and get behind him for an easy kill, and now we're just going to chase this Iris. He hits his ult, and then we're just going to kind of run the timeout on the ult because we're not going to be able to kill him while in it. So I'm just going to go back here and make sure that he can't get that heal. The mark is up top, and we do end up getting him really low. Our teammate kills him, and then we see the fade on the left, so we're going to run away from that because, yeah, I'm not, not going towards him. Luckily, we do distract the fade, making him chase us, and we are able able to be at full health, which is one of the great reasons for having the second ult. Like I said, it's so forgiving and it just allows you to make those mistakes and play a little looser and you can just get out of a lot of stuff.
stuff. Luckily, we are going to be sitting here after killing that guy and waiting for the Iris. We're going to chase him because we're the best player in the world, right? No, we're morons who get killed. So, don't be like me. Don't, don't chase people by yourself. But after we spawn, we see that there's people in the middle while our teammate's on the right, and that mark is coming right behind him. So we're going to go over. Since our teammate doesn't see the mark, we want to make sure that we go get him and don't let him kind of flank around. Luckily, we do get him, and then we're going to go for the healer. He pops his ult, so I just get straight out of there. No point in sitting next to him in a fade with that ult up. So we do drag the fade out, and I'm just putting on damage for him so my teammate can get out of there. I could have swore the guy died but he obviously didn't so we have to go back and double take on him luckily for me we do get the mark to one shot and kill him before the iris can really do anything to help and our teammate kills the iris so now all we got to do is get this mark right here and then one more round of kills after that and we should be home free so we do go ahead and get that kill and i'm just contesting here to make sure that we keep the hill in our favor and that will just make it to where the game ends faster and i cannot shoot for my life that iris just had to run in circles and that that's all it takes for me not to be able to hit him but eventually we do get him and we are going to kill the fade immediately and go back for that mark luckily he had half health so it was an easy kill and we win the game Going 13 and 2 with 8 assists, helping our team with a ton of damage. We took a pretty good amount, 50k, considering we only had the two deaths. And that is basically just what the second ult does it makes you live and tank all the damage. But the first ult makes it to where you kill people super fast, which can be very helpful in control. It also helps you be able to get out of very bad situations and play your life and then regroup, which makes it even better of an option than it is in payload race, even if you aren't the most skilled Elena. So right here, we're just trying to do a little bit of damage because the main thing we want to do is just get people low for our teammate and then be able to pop our ult, use that to heal and a little bit of damage, and that's exactly what we're able to do. So we're going to chase this Gloria in here, and then he's only one shot, easiest kill in my life. I can't take any damage, right? Well, apparently not, because he just absolutely destroyed me. But we are going to throw our ult down to get the speed boost and be invisible to the Sindri turret and go get that heal. In going invisible, having that speed boost, not being able to be shot by things like snipers, which can one-shot you, or Sindri turrets, is really helpful. And it's probably the best thing about having the first ult. Especially in this, where you're going to have a lot more situations that it's useful, having the fixed point is a lot less useful in um, like payload race. But for here, we do see that the Zendri dropped his ult, so we're just going to get out of there and go get a heal. We're up 56% to nothing, and our teammates are going to need our help. There's no point in dying and just staggering our spawns. So we do drop straight down, and we're going to pop our ult, and tell me how... This does not hurt that Sindri. That sucks. I don't know. Either way, we do die, but our teammates are still alive, so we're trying to get in there as soon as possible to come help them and retake that hill. Luckily, we do get the hill back up, and there is a turret on us that's pretty big damage, so what we're going to do is run around, because both our teammates died again, so we do have to do this with them. We cannot do this solo. The turret will end up getting us, or we'll get webbed. It's just an unfortunate thing that this comp we're playing against, we do need teammates. So we go ahead and kill the turret and get their heal, and then we come out, kill the Gloria immediately, and retake the hill. So we're very low, and we don't want to waste our ult to heal, so we go get the big one. And now we have our bomb, we can throw it into him, we get both kills there, and then we get another after that, and now we are home free. That's what I thought anyways, but we kill those guys and now we only have 3% to go with one guy alive and we have to kill him right here. He kills both our teammates uh, and then he drops his ult. So I'm going to drop my bomb onto his ultimate and then just wait for my team because there is no use in going in by myself. He drops an amazing turret position though, so I'm going to do my best to be able to get out there and do the damage. Sadly, the bomb just wasn't able to 
do it, and Sindri ended up getting the heal in the middle, so I wait for my team again, and before the fade gets up, our Gloria runs in and dies by himself, so that kind of sucks, but what you gonna do? I mean, matchmaking, matchmaking. Either way, we are going to run in there and do our best to get this kill. Our fade does a great job. The bad thing is we have no health here, and our ult's not up for a while, and our teammates don't know how to kill the turret or the sentry. So we just have to sit here till our ult comes back up. But either way, we do get our ult to come back up, and we heal, and then we're going to have to get out of here, though, and get another heal, because we just get too low too fast, and we try to get on there, but our ult's not up, so we're going to die immediately, and um, yeah, so that game sucked, but it wasn't because of the ult. And I only did one take each of these to show you an accurate representation, and if you get a guy on a second game of Fade, and a guy who's only played 35 games, that happens. But look how well I lived, so yeah, so you might like that ult. Um, I hate this game sometimes. Either way, you know what I don't hate? Jordy's thumbnails, because they're the best in the business. And you can have him make your thumbnails too. Just go to the description and get his Discord information, work out a deal, and have great thumbnails just like me. Alright guys, thanks for watching, and have a great day.